Well, we're down here at Mission Bay this morning to test out a couple of transducer configurations to see if we can um, find one that works at really high speed with the boat. So far, um, with side mount or with stern mount, uh, for different reasons, the transducers really don't produce good results above five or six or seven miles per hour. So the first test we're going to do is actually a pontoon mounted uh, transducer. I'm just going to strap it right onto the bottom of the pontoon and hope the water's a little cleaner there than it is coming under the transom. So there's the there's the setup. It's just I made a 3D printed a little adapter that can hold a strap so I can strap it right onto the bottom and that's what I'm going to do right now. And then we'll take it over to the dock, get the motor running and take it out and test it. The other test I'm going to do this morning is actually using a uh, transom mount um, and I bought a dead motor, a, tra a trolling motor, and threw away the motor and 3D printed an adapter. And with this, I can test submerging the transducer behind the stern and see how deep it has to go before we get out of that turbulent zone. I'm hoping it's only a couple of three inches. It might be more. Um, so that'll be the second thing we test. I actually expect this to work at some depth, while I kind of don't expect the pontoon version to work. I think air gets trapped under the pontoon as you go forward and it's, it's gonna screw up the, the radians, but we'll see. So it's really quite a shock. The um, transom, uh, the pontoon mounted transducer really seems to work extremely well. Uh, right now, this picture, I'm just idling, but uh, get the sun off of it. What I'm gonna try to do, the boats, uh, I've run up to 14 miles an hour and the display stays clean. Um, so let's, uh, I'll take it up here. so it's hard to hold the picture. That's eight miles an hour. It, it didn't work before at eight miles on the transom mount. Um, there's 11 miles an hour. Still a really clean, good, useful display. Well, 13 miles an hour. You can see a little hair starting to develop. miles an hour still totally useful display and now you can see uh, now it's not starting to fall apart so that's probably the upper end for this kind of mounting I'm really really impressed with that I'd be I'd actually uh, that's enough that you could actually cover some ground and see the bottom so next I'll get the um, the other configuration rigged up and see what we can do with that Again, uh, kind of loses the bottom at 10 miles an hour. Kind of weird. As soon as I slow down, it comes back. Well, I think from the test today, the conclusion is pretty clear. The pontoon mount was clearly superior. It worked at 13 or 14 miles an hour. That's a lot better than the five or six or seven miles an hour I was getting with a straight transom mounted transducer. I think this could work, uh, or the idea of submerging the transducer instead of putting it on the pontoon. Uh, clearly, this large uh, blunt surface moving through the water is allowing an air channel to develop all the way down to the transducer. It envelops the transducer, and that interferes with the uh, coupling to the water. I think if this were an airfoil to cut down on the drag so the water could flow around it smoother, they didn't want to create that channel, maybe even a flat plate to stop air from coming down before it hit the transducer. Uh, more better streamlined design up here for water coming at it this way. Um, I think you could get this thing to work at even higher speed. Uh, but that's all work for the future, and I'll, I'll keep working on it. But for the time being, I'm switching my boat over to a pontoon mounted transducer. Thanks for watching the video.